lesson eight. Um, today we're going to be talking about more premium function uses, <clears throat> such as presentation mode, annotating PDF files or pictures. Um, we're going to discuss offline notebooks, which is a very good, <clears throat> useful function for those who travel, and dictation. Um, so again, the first three I talked about, presentation mode, annotations, offline notebooks, are all premium features. Um, the dictation portion is not, um, but again, use this video, take a look at it. This might give you a good idea. If you want to go ahead and jump to the premium version um, to have access to these functions, um, I'll show you how to use each one and see if it might be beneficial for you. <clears throat> so the first one we're going to discuss is presentation mode. Um, so how many times have you probably heard the phrase death by PowerPoint? Well, I sit in a lot of meetings um, and I cannot tell you how many times my eyes glaze over during presentations. Evernote has, has gone a, a much different route when presenting material um, from what PowerPoint, the click, the click in slides. <clears throat> and so I want to show you exactly what they've done. Um, presentation mode works with any of your existing notes within Evernote and doesn't require you to spend any extra time or effort um, preparing your content, which is really nice to have. Um, it really just takes one click um, <clears throat> of a button and your notes going to expand um, to the dimensions of your monitor, um, which I'll show you here. And it, you'll clearly see the detail of these notes because if I were to put this on a big screen right now, It'd be very difficult to see. Nobody, I don't want them to see this information here. I don't want them to see what's in my inbox. All I want them to see is what's in the note itself. So by default, Evernote's going to present your note as one long scrollable note on the screen. Let me show you. So as I'm in this note, um, again, this is on the Mac version, and you'll see the same thing on the PC version. This little, so we talked about reminders. The next one to the right is show your notes in full screen presentation mode. I'm going to go ahead and click on this. As you see, my screen will expand and things kind of change here. Which gives you a nice, easy structure to read. Um, if I scroll down, it can go through the entire note. Um, but let's say I kind of wanted to have it look like slides where First thing I don't want people to see is the agenda. Let's focus. Maybe we're just setting up. The only thing I want people to see is the title. So um, there's a few things that we can do. So we're going to divide the note into multiple screens. Um, this is very simple to do. So if I just move my cursor to the right hand side, these are my settings. I'm not going to we'll go over these quickly here um, in just a minute or so. So let's first click on presentation layout. It's pretty neat. So what Evernote does, um, they're going to show your entire document on the right hand pane here. These blue dots are recommendations set by Evernote to say this is where I want to split my document up. Uh, let's, let's go with our first example. We just want to look at strategic planning. So we'll click on this plus sign. I'll come out and now all I see is the title, which is really great. And then if I scroll down, I can go further from there. So just to kind of give you an example, let's split up the agenda. Let's split up this topic. This topic and that topic. It's just all examples, so we'll go back up to the top. So I just scroll down. Now all I see is the agenda. More notes. And let's these are just more notes, just as an examples. Now Let's say this is too small to read, so what I'll do, I'll go ahead and press the command or the control plus sign, and you can make this as big as you need to, which is nice. This makes more sense to me. That's too big, so let's back out just a tad. So there you go. Um, <clears throat> so again, this kind of keeps the focus on what your presentation um, wants to or what your audience wants to look at. And so once you're kind of ready to move on to the next, instead of scrolling, you can also press the space bar and that'll go down to that next slide where um, you have your breaks here. So you can set these breaks where you need to. 
It's a very nice and easy way to organize your content and show this without using PowerPoint, which is a nice change for a lot of people. And there's some organizations out there who don't want to change at all, so this may not be the route for you. Okay. So a couple other things in presentation mode. Let me go back in there. Um, you can change the color of your cursor. Let's say I want blue instead of pink. Or if I press the control P button, I now go back to pink. Or I go to green um, just by clicking on here. Again, you can change the font size. I use the shortcut command command or control plus or minus to to do these things. It's just a lot quicker. <clears throat> and last is um, a daytime and nighttime presentation mode. So it's defaulted today, but you can also have the back background with the white text, um, which is pretty neat to have too, but most people will probably want to read it. Vice versa. Um, I think that's all I presentation mode all consists of. It's pretty simple and easy to use. Um, good function to have. So let's move on. Let me back out of here. Next is annotations. Annotations are, I, I use them quite often, especially during presentations or if I'm giving somebody a proposal or recommendations. There's, there's many different reasons to use them. Um, it's simply just marking up different images or PDF files. Now, the PC version is not near as flexible with annotations within the Evernote application. There's a third-party software out there. Actually, it's not really a third. It is a third-party to Evernote called Sketch. Um, we're going to go over that in the next video more in detail. Um, I'll actually open up that application and show you how that works. Um, but just to kind of give you a sneak peek, um, within the Mac version, <clears throat> let's say I want to focus on this. This is an image. So this is an actual picture off uh, the Internet that I saved. And... I want to annotate this image. So again, this is on the Mac version. I can focus just on this image, or I can pull the entire note and create a PDF and then mark up that PDF, which I don't want to do right now. Let's say I just want to annotate this image. So if I scroll in here, this is using my command plus, let's say I want to focus just on Houston Methodist. An annotation is able to give me that function. Oops. <clears throat> I can go ahead and make this line smaller. If I click on that line, maybe I don't want it as thick. And um, there's a couple things here you can do text, take a look at this. Uh, maybe you want to highlight. Maybe we take a look at some of our competition here. That's not a very thick one. There we go. more free text drawing. Um, you can put in little staples like this. We are going on to construction here. We'll put a nice check mark or um, maybe we have a question mark about how many beds this facility has. You can go ahead and add the arrow to it as well. You don't have to have that arrow next to it. It's just nice to indicate what you're pointing to. Um, you can pixel out other things if you don't want people to read it, and then you can have nice little arrows, whatever color you choose. So you can mark it up in a thousand different ways, and I just wanted to kind of show you what you're capable of doing. So once I X out of this, you'll now see that my note has this on here. 
So it's the same note, but now my, my note has annotations on it. So I usually do this before I send it off so I know, so I tell people what, what I want them to see. And it makes them really focus on what the point I'm trying to drive home with them. So a good way to design. I do a lot of design work with this as well. If I'm organizing my, uh, my yard, my garage, I put my measurements on there with lines. Um, let's see if I can quickly find a home project with that. There you go, my garage to-do list. So this is kind of my garage note. When I first moved into my house, I didn't know what I wanted to do. It was kind of a mess. Um, just simple ideas on what I thought might be good on wall storage, overhead storage, and things like that. Um, and luckily enough, a lot of it turned out to be true. I installed my pegboard, um, a lot of shelves, ended up going with the refrigerator, um, and things like that. So it's a very good measurement opportunity. So that kind of sums that up. We'll, we'll go over Skitch and some of its capabilities next video. Next, I want to talk about offline notebooks. Um, can't really do this from my Mac version. This is done on your travel material, so anything that's mobile, such as your phone or your tablets. So offline notebooks are useful when you want to edit notes when you're commuting um, on a bus or a train, uh, on a plane, basically anywhere without internet access. So if you don't have internet access, offline notebooks are a good function to have, especially if you're at without internet for a certain period of time, for a long period of time. So for full access to an entire notes and notebooks from a mobile device, um, which we just went over, you'll need to use the premium paid version to set up the offline notebook. So this is a premium function. And to do this, um, on the iOS version, you will need to go to your account on your Evernote you would need to tap on the general button. You will then click on notebooks and then you'll click on offline notebooks. <clears throat> so you have the option to download all your notes, which would take a very long time. Typically you don't need all your notes to be offline or you can just tap download select notebooks. This is the one that I do when I travel. Um, I usually t use my itinerary if I'm traveling on vacation to use an offline notebooks and everything. I don't have to have internet access to pull up um, any kind of uh, travel receipts, any kind of itineraries, any kind of traveling documents. I just have it all there. I don't need internet. It's going to be there no matter what. Um, and then once you select that notebooks, you tap on notebooks at the top of the screen to confirm your changes. <coughs> Excuse me. So a few ways to do this, to use this feature. I mentioned planning your uh, your trip itinerary. Um, again, browse through articles, um, email recommendations, maps, confirmations before you land out your destination. So you kind of have everything ready to go once you kind of get off the plane. Um, tying up any loose ends. So I like to um, get work done on the plane, and I don't like to pay for the internet access. My company doesn't pay for it. I know it can be expensive for some of those airlines. I'll take it with me put them in an offline notebook so I can work on them anytime. Um, I can make edits, write out emails, and then once I kind of hit the ground, it'll send off. Um, you can kind of do the same thing in Outlook and just put it in a draft folder and then kind of once you hit the ground, everything will drop at once. Uh, but Evernote's a good way to do that as well. Another good way is to capture inspiration. Um, it's a great time to kind of harness your energy. You're kind of stuck in one place. Um, you kind of whip out your mobile device and capture any ideas, whatever kind of comes to your mind. And so that's that's kind of just the offline notebooks in a nutshell. If you have any questions regarding that, I'm happy to, to go more in detail if necessary, but that kind of sums up how to do it. Um, dictation's the last one. So you actually have to set up voice dictation on a lot of your devices. Um, I'm not gonna go into the details of that. You can, I put those instructions in the note links um, so go ahead and click on the note links if you want to go into more information there. Um, <clears throat> but once you do set that up, at least on the Mac version, um, you just go ahead and hit the function button twice. Test, 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 one, two, three.
Hello, testing, testing one, two, three. And so you see it automatically comes up after you talk into it. It's not perfect, but it's a good way um, to write without typing. <clears throat> Period. So notice that you have to, I, I work in healthcare and physicians obviously dictate, they can't write everything out or type everything out or take too long. So it is proven that dictation is a lot faster than writing. Um, it's kind of your preference though. Some people, it, it takes it takes some time getting used to. But when you are dictating, make sure you um, say the word period if you want to end your sentence. And if you want to move to the next line, um, I believe you say um, enter or return or next line, and it'll move down to the next line at the bottom there. So that sums up dictation. Um, if there's any questions around, regarding this video, please feel free to reach out and let me know. I'm happy to help. Um, that will conclude my Evernote Lesson 8. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.